Welcome back to another episode of UA's Double Overtime. I am Connor Delaney, and join us today. We had Mike keep the seat warm, but here we go. We have uh, our very own Vic back. Welcome back, Vic. It, it feels great to be back. A little break, but uh, I'm ready to go. Fired up, especially from last night because of those Yankees. Those Yankees. Last night in the bottom of the ninth, A Rod comes up to the plate. He's been struggling a lot. He's been hearing the boos, the criticism. He's pathetic. He needs this. Joe Girardi pinch hits him for Raul Abanez. Raul comes up, smacks a home run. Then again, the bottom of the 12th, he does it again. Connor, Walk was this? Home run. What, what was this? Was this purely off adrenaline? Was, I mean, he's a great signing. He's, he's been he's been clutch this postseason so far. Um, he was clutch leading in, going into the postseason. Had a few big big home runs going into the, the postseason there. But more off, what a better move by Girardi to bench a Rod. He, he's been one and for. That's, and that, not not everybody could do that. Not no. everybody's got the got he, the courage to do that. He's been one for twelve this postseason with seven strikeouts. Hasn't been clutch. Um, it, and A Rod and I, I can you know A Rod can you know he he handled it pretty well. You, you heard him like he was up there cheering. He was you know when that ball left wobble was bad. I think he was the first one to throw his hands in the air there and right. to, to celebrate the victory. But um, no, I mean good for Jardy. I, I mean I think that's good for A Rod. Hopefully maybe it takes some pressure off him. He'll get back in the lineup um, for you know. Do you game, think it does anything five, to his confidence? Game, game four, but do you think it's anything, does anything to his confidence? Is there even a chance he doesn't start in the next game? Oh, he's definitely gonna start. I mean he's, he's Alex Rodriguez. He he will start. Um, He's not, you know, he's not going to be that pinch hitter. I mean, that's what you need. You want guys like that on the bench, like Raul Abanez, who you can insert to a lineup and can come through in a clutch and, and perform. Um, a Rod, being the player that he is, and, and we all know him as, you know, one of the greatest to ever play the game of baseball. But you know, sometimes it just it happens. The guys are in a slump, and you got a guy on the bench who can get the job done. Joe Girardi took a chance, put him in, and, and it paid off. So you know, tip my hat to Joe Girardi for that move and a huge. Huge win for the Yankees in that game. Yeah. Game three Especially to go when, up. You know the series could have shifted towards oh, Baltimore's. Yeah, momentum. and you know to have that pressure on you to be down, you know, two one. It's it's that, that was that was a huge win for the Yankees. They they had to win that game. Big big triple for Jeter there to get that triple and score that first run. Um, Adam Jones kind of played that ball a little, little bad. You know, ran a, ran a long route on that ball, but it was windy in the Yankee Stadium last night. So that that you think Baltimore a lot. even stands a chance right now. I think Yanks will take the series. I mean, they're up two one, have a commanding lead. Um, probably have CC pitch. Or, or Phil Hughes is pitching this next game, and if, if it goes into Game Five, you'll have CC on the mound. So I'm very confident with the Yankees right now, and, and the strides they're taking heading into the series and hopefully into the ALCS. So, which speaking of the ALCS, their uh, opponent we will have be up will either be um, Oakland or Detroit. As Oakland last night evened up the series two-two on another game, not a not a, a walk-off home run, but a, a, a single to by Coco Crisp to take the lead, and especially the double in the bottom of the ninth. That. Look, th- there's something about this. They were down three one. They were down three one. Yeah, they're the only team to have three rookie starting pitchers in the series. It's 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 really I love it. unbelievable. I love it. You it's got great. This, the fans you got this love Detroit it. team it, who who was put together. You brought guys like Prince Fielder who had a, a big home run like last Oakland, night. His first usually Detroit. makes it to the first round and then makes the division series and then just loses. Doesn't really get that. Mm-hmm. You know, they started with the the Billy Bean ball back in the nineties. That you know. I, I like what's going on in Oakland. I, I really do. I like it based on the fact that we, I feel like you and I have the same opinion that we always talk about this with teams that are put together and not players brought in. Oakland is right. that small market team that have that small, small budget. And, you know, Billy Bean is a phenomenal GM. I mean, I, Moneyball, you know. Um, but it's a great movie. It's a fantastic movie. But on a side note, it's a fantastic movie. But, you know, and they, they bring in these players and they develop these rookies and then you know, after so many years and they want to get to higher contracts, they leave these teams, like, you know, like a guy like Nick Swisher did when he was with right. Oakland starting. Um, but it's just it's, it's good to see that and then to be able to compete with a team like Detroit that has a, a budget of, you know. Well, now they got game five and they're five going up t- against Verlander. they got a really tough matchup there. I, I don't see them winning game five against Verlander, the best pitcher in the MLB, in my opinion. Um, I think it, it could be done. It's in Detroit. Um, Right, the game's in Detroit, so I think Verlander in Detroit is just, he's going to be too good on, on the mound. And it's something, it's something, something about, about the A's. Hey, A's. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to see the A's and the Yankees. Um, nice for, match. Especially for the Yankees' sake, sake as well, just, you know, to have, I, I feel like I like my odds against, you know, that A's lineup as opposed to the Detroit's lineup against our pitching staff. But, right. um, but let's, uh, let's flip to the National League. You know, we got Cincinnati and San Francisco. We're going game five after... San Francisco looked pretty bad in those in those first few games, but they got they Matt Kane on the mound. They came back. And everybody they, knows they're, they're very behind Kane. He's their, probably their best. He's their ace. Matt Kane versus uh, Matt Latos for pitching for the Reds. Who do you like? Who do you like? I like Matt Kane personally. I think he, you know he had the better, more wins throughout the regular sixteen wins compared to fourteen. 
Um, he had a he had a sub three ERA, like two point six seven or something like that. Um, he's a big strikeout guy, um, dominant pitcher when he has his stuff going. I think Kane is, is going to be too good. The same I think I think it comes down to the bats. You know, Joey Votto's batting three fifty seven, Phillips three sixty eight, a couple other guys batting over three hundred. And for me, I you pick, know the Giants in the first three games had uh, eleven had twelve hits combined. Last night they had eleven. Mm -hmm. So it's it's purely I think it's purely offensive. Granted, they had a very close game that went extra innings, but like two one or something. Yeah, but. I think it's going down to the batch. Joey Votto's got to step up. He's got to show him that he's that MVP for a I couple think, of years Yeah, ago. and I think Cincinnati has that better, more dominant lineup. Um, but I just think the pitching and the experience of San Francisco, you know, a manager like Bruce Bochy is going to know what to do, get the job done. Even on um, the road? That's that's the thing. Cincinnati, great American ballpark. It's it's going to be a, a happening place there in Cincinnati, you know, for the, for them to be there in game five. Um, I, I think it comes down to the starting pitching. Whoever can go – longer distance and, and avoid getting to that bullpen first. I, I think if it gets to San Francisco's bullpen, I'm more confident in San Francisco's bullpen, you know, with guys like Sia and Sergio Romo, guys like those who you can bring in and, you know, really have been phenomenal all season. Where Cincinnati, another great bullpen, you know, Chapman is one of the best closers out there. Um, but I just think wh whichever starting pitcher can go longer into into the game, that team, you know, is, is going to come out on top. But, you know, let's transfer from, from that series to the other National League series where it's not evened up. It's St. Louis and the Washington Nationals. Um, Washington Nationals coming in, you know, as one of the favorite teams in this postseason, you know, as the regular season they had. But they're down 2-1 to the St. Louis Cardinals. And, Vic, what do you make of this? Do you think this has anything to do with the, the Strasburg effect? I mean, look, we all know Strasburg's got a great arm. He looked fantastic. You know, people said he looks great. What's the point of shutting him down now? They had to do it. you got to think long. They had to think long term. Granted, this is the first time they've been to the postseason as, as this new franchise in Washington. And, you know, there's a lot of things going on with the organization, a lot of good things. Um, they have other good pitchers, you know, Gio Gonzalez. They have these guys. They Edwin had great, Jackson. They had yeah. a great I mean, year. And, but their team has been built on starting pitching right. for the entire year. And to take your guy, your your number one, you know, arguably one of the best pitchers in the NL in, in Strasburg and, and put him on the bench for, you know, a postseason series, I mean, I get the whole long-term thing, but at the same time, like, this is your guy who you're – he's your franchise guy. He's, you know, he's, your, he's the face of your organization, and you're going to – Put him down and bench him, and you know when it comes to the postseason. I understand. I understand the rest leading into the postseason, but come postseason play, if you can't get six, seven innings out of this do guy, do you think he could adjust after sitting down for so long? That's the thing. That's the thing. I mean, in between those times, you have to do certain bullpen sessions, things of those nature, just to you know keep the I mean, arm. I, I loose. love you know I love the Nash. We said you know we'd love to see them go as, as far as they can. But and I, the I don't, worst, I don't, I, don't, I don't think they're quite the ready. worst possible matchup for them was the St. Louis Cardinals, right. just because one of the champs that experience they have. Um, the players that have been there, I mean, obviously, they're a little different look than the team they had last year with Tony La Russa not being there. And, I think I mean, come next year they'll be, they'll be, they'll be much more prepared. I, I agree. I agree. I think the Nationals have tremendous amount of, of potential. Um, they just with, with Strasburg, he needs to get his ability to get his innings up so that way we, we're not talking about this, you know, and, and want to see the guy pitch when it, right, when it matters absolutely. most as, as opposed to the Next thing you know, will be pitching Game 7 World Series in Washington, hopefully. But... Let's flip it to the NBA, where a couple days ago, Kobe Bryant came out with some comments where he said, quote, it's just that three more years seems like a really long time to continue to stay at a high, high level of training and preparation and health. That's a lot of years. For a guard, that's a lot of years. Connor, you know, Los Angeles knew this day was going to come. I knew it was going to come. He's my favorite player. You, you really think he's going to be done after that contract's up? I think what he means by that is done by the level of play he's playing at. And I don't think Kobe's going to be that type of guy that's going to want to go and be a six-man on a role-player no. team. He's going he's gonna to want to come out. He's going to want to win. He's going to try. I mean, with the team they have, he's obviously wanted to win a few more championships. But um, he's going to want to go out on top, go out as the best. Um, I, I just, it, it's, it's demanding. You know, he's had a long career. He was along for the three champion. He was along for the ride with those three championships with Shaq. You know, he, he Look, along for the please along, along for, along he for the ride. ride. They wouldn't have he was along for the ride with Kobe Shaq. Kobe Bryant is one of one of the greatest players we, we've ever seen, especially our day and age. One of the greatest. You know, granted mm -hmm. LeBron's athletic freak, but nobody closes out a game like Kobe Bryant. And the, okay. the, the fact that he could be nearing his end is, is very scary. I, I mean, it's, it had, like you said, it had to come at some time. Lakers fans, you know. Sorry, he's, he's played almost seven, 17 years with it, this team. Exactly, and you know he's he's had his success five rings, you know multiple All Stars. I think he wants one more though. Of course, I, I mean, think he wants why, that six with one. the team they just put together. Obviously, they, they have no reason. Not they have to. no reason to get there, and you know they're they're going to lose to Heat and LeBron. It's, it's and speaking be okay. of that team, but you know Kobe said something about Dwight Howard. You know he's he's the best, what, hands down the best center in the, in the could NBA. Could be possibly be the best center unless Dwight Howard develops some post moves and some type of offensive game. 
as opposed to just collecting and, and offensive that's been boards the main and putting critique. up for a dunk. He, he can't compete with Shaq. Shaq, you know, was one of the most dominant centers, um, if not the most dominant, to ever, you know, put on a Lakers jersey. And that's, there's, you know, Will Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, there's been some pretty dominant um, centers in, within that organization. But for Kobe, Kobe's just trying to take a blow at Shaq here. Obviously, like I said, being along for those rides, he's a little bigger. I, think it's, I, th- I, a little I, I think it's more motivational. I think, I think having Dwight Howard here from Kobe Bryant, you know, the leader of this team, that this is one of the best centers, he is dominant, I think it's more motivating. You know, we know all the Shaq, Kobe, whatever, whatever have you, whatever it is. Listen, that, that, that beef is done. There's no more beef. There might be some stuff behind closed doors. I don't know. The point is that I don't think this is a jab at Shaq. I think this is just trying to get Dwight motivated. The pressure's on Dwight right now. He's playing alongside Pau Gasol. He's in Los Angeles. Yeah, Steve Nash, you know, arguably one of the best pick and roll point guards of, of this generation. He can't get know? it done with Steve Nash. I don't know who Dwight Howard can get it done no, with because no, it seems he's they have got no problems. excuse to get the NBA Finals. Um, so, but that about uh, that wraps up our our first half here. Um, we're gonna take a break. We'll come back in our second half. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. We're going to jump into our second half, which is a football-loaded half. We're going to talk about NFL, and then we're going to go to college towards the end. Connor, let's talk about those Packers. They've had some struggles. They've now lost Cedric Benson. Greg Jennings has been injured along the way. What's going on with the Packers? It should be 3-2. and two. Let's get that. You know, 2-3 and three is a little ridiculous, that Monday night game against the Seahawks. It, it, it is what it is. It is it what, is it, what is. it is. You know, it is what it is. They're 2-3. and three. Um, I think the Packers will be fine. They have a huge game coming up against Houston this week that is, you know, Big, big test for Houston and, you know, you know, big game for it's Packers. Be that they Sunday night prime time, all the lights are going to be on. I can't wait for that game. Um, Packers can't go 2-4. and four. they, they got to even it up, get 500 there against Houston. Um, Aaron Rodgers comes out, does a, a Tebow-like move and, and blames himself, says he promises to every day here on out to work and, you know, do his, whatever he possibly can. No one will go as hard as I can, well, for the rest of the season. <laughs> Look, I think, I think this is absolutely on Aaron Rodgers' shoulders. I think this is his team. He's been an MVP. He's won a Super Bowl. I think yeah, if, if, the, he, if he wants to turn this into a dynasty, it's, it's on him. Granted, the defense has got to step it up a little. I didn't really like what I saw in Indianapolis. But there are some plays, there are some passes, some routes are being like half run sometimes. It, it's like they're all over the place. I think, I think they've got to figure themselves out. And this is a big test for them. I, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Aaron Rodgers, like you said, is the leader of that team, MVP. He's... In my opinion, one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback in the NFL. Um, just Cedric Benson, but like, look at the running game last year. It's not like right. they had like a dominant running game. Then you get back to that pass heavy. Well, now, well, now that they don't have that pass heavy offense, they can't really turn to a run game. So they, they got to figure it out. You know, let Aaron Rodgers throw the ball. He has the targets. He has the weapons there. Um, Look, I mean, you saw it. That last shot against Indianapolis, it's like it well, takes them 30 seconds had, to get down a, the field. They had a big game there. They had a huge, They had a big lead, and then they blew that to the, to the Colts. Uh, you know, 30 to 27, they were up. I don't you know exactly what they were up by, but they had a big lead there. Um, they, and they still had a chance to tie it at the end. Still, yeah, no, you're, you're totally right. That what was, I saw in that last drive is the Aaron Rodgers we used to see. A guy just gets the ball down the field, confident makes guy, the plays, yeah, the runs plays, the, the offense. Play. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's like we're not seeing that over the course of the game. I think I think the Packers will bounce back. Um, you know, the, the Green Bay Packers. But let's uh, stop talking Packers and, and go to a less of a contender and talk the uh, the New York Thanks. Jets. Thanks. Thanks for that. The, hey, you know, I'm in the same boat as you, buddy. But the New York Jets, uh, Mike, Mike Tannenbaum comes out and says that uh, Tim Tebow will stay for the tenure of his contract for the full three years. Um, what is? What do you make of this? What do you think of uh, well, will happen? It's there? funny because Sanchez also has three years left, right? Or this is the first of the three year mm-hmm. extension. No, no, no. He has this, and then he's got the three year extension. Yep. I think they need to keep Tebow for, for the sake of, you know, mixing it up. I, I mean, I'm I'm confused. I, I, as ask, a fan, I'm lost. I, I, ask, I don't know what's going on. Ask every show, and I, Mike and I were talking about it last week. Is it Tebow time? I think it is. I, th- I think you got to give him a yeah, shot. especially you gotta, against you that let, Houston game. Because it's, I'll tell you the problem. Tebow, when, when he's in an offense and he's comfortable, he can, he can do whatever he wants. He's ball he's ready for it. And then who's, who dropped that? It was right in the, right in the cookie Cromartie. jar. Cromartie. You see, look, look they, they, they're putting Cromartie on offense right now. I mean, they have no receivers. The problem I have is that have... you bring in Tebow, you have him line up under, you know, in the shotgun, and then you, you motion him out and then say, just, what's the point of that? Yeah. What's the point of them keep, to keep doing this? Yeah. And they don't, it's they it's to, hurting them as an offense. I think they're confused. Tony Soprano has a lot of good schemes. We know what he did in, in Miami, and you know now we're through five games. I, you've got to use him more. Let him yeah. run a little more. Yeah. I've seen plays. There was a game in the game against Pittsburgh. He like had this one play, ran for twenty yards, and, and then they just took him out. 
I think yeah. I, I don't understand. I really don't understand. Let him get a, let him get a, in a groove there and let him get some you know some momentum going and, and get in the stride and you know run that offense. I mean that's what you brought him in for. Sanchez clearly isn't getting the job done. You know, um, you, know you know he had a few picks there. You know that one in the second half that it was could have been ten to seven or uh, what was they had it? a chance. Four, it could yeah. have been fourteen to ten going into the half as opposed to that that. Tip I mean, was passed J, by J.J. J. J. Watt. J.J. J. Watt was something else the other night. Interception go down, and it's 17-7 going in the half as opposed to 14-10. I think, I, I, think, I think it comes down to Sanchez. I, I don't like what I'm seeing with him. He's got to figure something out. You know, Go back to the Caribbean. I, I don't know what to tell this kid anymore. It's, it's, like he, it, it's like he doesn't trust himself, and that's the problem. I think he really doesn't trust what he's doing. Granted, he doesn't have the weapons. Said Tony Holmes is out. He doesn't have Braylon Edwards like he used to. Not even Plaxico Burris. It, they, they it's, 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 it's not Rex Tio, Ryan's fault. Terrell anymore. Owens is the answer. In, 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 it's it's, in, it's, in it's always Terrell Owens. But I, I, I really don't think I, you can't blame Rex. You know, I think he had better tools those first couple of years. And as players go out and they didn't keep the players they should have, I don't think they should have ever let go of Braylon Edwards. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think so either. That was you know even Plax. Plax was wasn't a bad receiver. They, they, this quarterback situation's got to be figured out because fans are getting restless, and you know I think people in the organization are a little confused. So, someone's got to be confused, saying, "What are we, we going to pick some money?" I agree. I agree. And we're gonna get off that. And you know they almost beat Houston last week. They should have. You know Houston left the door wide open. Jets didn't capitalize. But we're gonna talk Houston and Atlanta Falcons. They're both uh, both five and zero. Oh, and who do you have as the better team right now? Who's the better undefeated team? I like Houston because of one person. Arian Foster. This guy runs like an animal. He would run all over you. You know, the other thing is, Matt Schaub isn't spectacular, but he does he what he needs to get done. He, he gets, gets the, the job, job done. done. He does. And Matt Ryan does too. And I've always been a big fan of Matt Ryan. Matt always, Ryan has been He always faced a lot he's of criticism, been... and he's, that offense looks very good, but I think the fact that Michael Turner, you know, age is starting to take a toll on him. You know, Jack Chris Rogers is the other back, and he's very tiny. I think once you take away that passing game, they really don't have anything but else. That passing offense. game is phenomenal. Passing game is very good. I mean, Roddy White is arguably you know one of the best possession receivers in the NFL. Lining as far as a, alongside with Julio Jones, Julio Jones, who's and one of the most got Tony Gonzalez, receivers. Tony G, you know, experienced tight end there. Um, but what is what does it mean for Houston to lose losing um, a team captain and the captain of that defense like Brian Cushing? You know? I, th- I think it's going to take a big loss. You know, he really led that linebacking led, court. After J.J. Watt, he was that other, you know, fire-up guy, loud guy. He was know, he that guy. He was that, year. you know, that, that, you know that, that Ray Lewis for them, that Patrick Willis, that guy in the middle that was, you know, in the middle of the huddle getting things going. When you don't have that. Up. When you don't, you don't have, have that, that, that takes a lot away from your defense. And, and, and the Jets can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Jets can tell you a lot, of, a lot more things A lot more that, things but, than just that. Well, We're going to cut it with the NFL, and let's talk about that. College football, I love so much. We have a huge matchup this weekend. Number three, South Carolina going into the Bayou. Number nine, LSU. This is a huge, huge game for South Carolina. It could be the first, this could be the first season they could go to the national championship. How big is this game for South Carolina? It's huge. It's uh, probably the biggest game on their schedule. Um, I mean, after this, they do play They play Florida, number, number four, Florida. It's going to be another interesting So another, another huge game, but it's at LSU. Um, this, if they can get through these next two weeks at LSU, at Florida, we'd be looking at a possible SEC championship and then BCS number one um, in their first, like you said, national national. Focusing more on this game, you know, you got these great coaches. Yeah, let's focus Les on this Miles, game. Steve Spurrier, fire up guys, coaches who have methods people don't even understand. Les Miles eating grass, all this, all this stuff. You know, Steve Spurrier's been around for a while. If you were a player, who would you want to play for? Less miles, less miles, just because he's had the uh, the you know the success there. I mean, he's been there. He's been in the title games. Has national championships. Yeah, Spurrier's got a championship before. He does. He, Danny Warfel, ninety six. Yeah, don't forget I, about that. You're right. You're right. But I just think as, as of as of late, you know. Um, I think I love about Les Spurrier. Miles. He's, he's that old school kind of coach. He has been around the game for a while. Les Miles is that very that very serious. You know, has that very serious demeanor on game day. But he's also that guy that you know. He I feel like he connect to his players and he's you absolutely. Know, and, um, I, I, who do you like in this game as far as winning the game? I really see, I really like South LSU. Carolina. You know, I think Marcus Even Lattimore, when LSU when he's, just when Marcus Lattimore is grinding it out and gaining up those yards on the ground, I think he's very hard to stop. They went in. They, I they like killed Lattimore. Georgia last. Georgia was number six. They just destroyed, they destroyed them, Georgia. thirty-five to seven. I like Lattimore. I like Connor Shaw um, under center. I think the only thing that's stopping me from pick them is one: LSU is just coming off a loss, a big loss. They're hungry. They, you know, they want to get back. You know, Les Miles isn't going to accept. Two losses in a row, not. and as well as it's an LSU, and we know how hard of a place that is to it go is. in and, and get a W, uh, get a W in. So I just think I, I, I'm going to go LSU. I'm going to take the upset. I'm going to. I like South Carolina. I like their offense, but I just think LSU is just going to come out um, and just be more aggressive from the start and just really control the pace of that football game. 
So that's you know I I gotta go with, I gotta go with LSU. Well, it's a, it's an interesting pick, and we'll we'll see what happens this weekend. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about the NFL for a little bit, and then we're gonna jump into our big finish. Stay tuned. <laughs> Had a concussion, oh, you know. Good Lord. He got a concussion. The guy hit heads with another head, a helmet and helmet, you know. Welcome back. We're at that point at the end of our show. We're going to do our big finish. But before we get into that, we're going to talk about the uh, the Kansas City Chiefs and what recently just happened there with, with Matt Castle getting hurt. Um, he got a concussion, and as he was getting taken off the field, the fans were cheering him off the field as if they were happy that to see him, you know, hurt. Um, and then Eric Winston came out and had a big, big statement to say, uh, Here's, let's take a look. Here's what he had to say. We are athletes. We're not gladiators. This isn't the Roman Coliseum. People pay their money, hard-earned money, to come in here. And I believe they can boo, they can cheer, they can do whatever they want. Because I believe that, hey, we're lucky to play this game, a game. But when you cheer, when you cheer somebody getting knocked out, I don't care who it is. And it just so happened to be Matt Castle. It's sickening. It's 100% sickening. And I've never, ever, and I've been in some rough times on some rough teams, I've never been more embarrassed in my life to play football than in that moment. But he's a person. And he got knocked out in a game. And we got 70,000 people, people cheering that he got knocked out. But if you were one of those people one of those people that were out there cheering or even smiled when he got knocked out, I just want to let you know, and I want everybody to know that I think it's sickening and disgusting. And, Vic, what do you, what do you make of this? I, I mean, someone had to say something. This, this, this was disgusting. I, how, how can you do that? When, when I was a little kid and I used to see, you know, players at Carter Field, there used to be like a clap. I used to think that they were cheering. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. You know, until my brother slapped me in the head and knocked some sense into me. But this, this was, this, this was ridiculous. Yeah, no, how, how, how can you call yourself, you know, ethical this, fans and yeah. with, with good values? And this, this is what you're doing. I mean, it's one thing when, when you're in Philly and, and Michael Irving gets hurt, and then the Philly fans are cheering Michael Irving off the field. But to have your own home crowd, you know, cheer as as if they're happy that he get hurt. And Eric wants to. And if this is what Kansas City fans want to be known as, then you know that's fine. But I, I don't think they want this image. I think everybody is, is thinking that this, this is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I, I think Eric Winston's totally right in what he said, and I don't think he was too harsh. Um, it is, it's just, even it's, if he was a little harsh, it's you know, be, someone, it's, someone it's, had to step up and it's say It's got to it. be a sick feeling. I mean, you know, the feeling of Matt Castle to be, you know. In, and also, how can you play for a team that has fans like this? How can you run onto the field, feel supported by these people, when they're cheering on your quarterback goes down? I don't care how bad the guy is. Like, yeah, you tell me Mark Sanchez is going to go down the New York Jet fans are going to start cheering? I hope to God not. I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, it's it terrible. Terrible situation in Kansas City. Yes, they are playing pretty badly, but that deserves no right to have a player like Matt Castle deserves that type of treatment by, by his own fans. You know, absolutely not. So, Absolutely not. But so my favorite part of the show is showing that big finish. You know, we got teams like Florida, West Virginia, Alabama, all on the road, all in the top five. Any of them get upset this weekend? I say Florida. I agree with you. Florida, Florida's Florida. got to watch it. They've been very, very, very tight games. They really got to be careful. So. Um, Notre Dame, Stanford, who do you have in that game? I like Stanford. I like Notre Dame. I like Notre Dame. You like, so I, it's, it's, I have to go with the Irish. Big test for Notre Dame. Big test Huge for Notre test. Dame. We got the old-fashioned shootout in Texas. Texas, Oklahoma. Who are you taking? Uh, Texas. They're going to come back. They got to bounce back after that. Hook 'em loss. horns, baby. Hook 'em horns. All right, all right. I like it. We're agreeing here. Uh, Geno Smith. Is he a sure thing for Heisman? Yes or no? Looks pretty good. West Virginia in that top five. They stay there. I think he's got Absolutely, it. Absolutely, I agree. Dallas, Baltimore. Who are you taking? I gotta take Baltimore. I think Dallas can be a good game, but Baltimore. They, they want. They want Baltimore's keep just a little too strong. Too strong. I don't, yep. like, I don't like what I'm seeing my boy Tony Romo. Uh, another game we talked about earlier. Packers, Houston. Huge game for both teams. I gotta go Houston. I, mean, just, I, gonna, I just don't like what I'm seeing. I'm, Green taking, Bay. I'm taking the Packers Sunday night prime time. Denver, San Diego. Does Peyton Bounce Back. Monday night, I'm taking. I gotta go with Peyton and the Denver Broncos. Gotta go with Peyton on Monday night. Come on. And uh, switching to baseball, ALCS matchup. What do you have? I think I think the A's and Yanks both get it done. Yanks and Detroit. Yanks Ooh. and Detroit. And what about the NLCS? NLCS. I'm gonna have to go. Originally went with Cincinnati. I'm gonna go to San Francisco and St. Louis. I'd love to see Washington get there. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say these Nats pull it off, and I'm gonna say that they play the Reds. Fair enough. All right. We'll agree to disagree. Well, that wraps it up. Uh, I'll send it over to Mike and find out what we messed up on today. Mike? Connor. Tigers A's are staying in Oakland, and I actually have an error myself from last week. Andy Pettit has 19 career postseason victories, not 17.
Catch you later if you give me a good pass. Can't can't get them all right. You know, you can't win them all. You can't win them all. You can't win them all. But, um, you know, that, that about wraps up the show for this week. It was, you know, a great show. Vic, it was a pleasure having you back on Across from Me. It was great being back. It was great being back. You know, um, what, do you, what, do you, what do you got going on this weekend? What are you watching? Look, there's, there, there, there is... There's too much sports too much going to watch on. in a matter of three days. Hopefully we'll be celebrating popping you know, champagne because of the, the Yankees get the, winning. Get the TiVo going on this weekend. Get, so. Hopefully we see some TiVo time because Lord knows New York needs it. But uh, thanks for tuning in, guys, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.